Hello friends! December is finally here, which means that it's time to bundle up and get cozy. And in today's video, I'll share with you my very minimalist winter wardrobe, show you some of my favorite outfits. And I don't think that it can be called a perfect capsule with a lot of neutrals, because I love colors, I love interesting cuts and some unobvious combinations. Today you will see a lot of handmade items as well as ready-made garments, both from sustainable and fast fashion brands. And by the way, this video is not sponsored by any of the brands. By the way, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Anna, and this channel is about minimalism, intentional and simple living, and personal adventures of a heavy-duty introvert. And if you're back, I'm so glad to have your company again. My current wardrobe is built for milder European winter, but originally I'm from Siberia. I was born and spent most of my life in Western Siberia, so I know very well what cold, real cold is, and I love layering everything. Two years ago on this channel, I made a video where I showed my actual real Siberian wardrobe. So if you're interested, I will link that video up there. It's very fun to compare because since then my life has changed pretty radically. This is my recently finished knitted item that is made from very beautiful raspberry colored tweed yarn. It's very basic, very oversized, light and warm. I intentionally sized up and made it even longer. Thanks to its oversized fit, I can wear it with my pants and my dresses without worrying about the combinations of widths and lengths. Now that I have become a more confident knitter, I don't think that I will ever buy a pre-knitted item ever again. But this cardigan is store-bought. I got it back in Serbia, in Belgrade, about a year ago. It's from a local brand and it's light, thin, but at the same time very warm. I bet that I will keep it for years to come, because it also holds up very important memories from that all that time that we spent in Serbia. I pair it with my pants and the blue dress. This is another handmade item, something that I created myself, and today you will see quite a lot of such items, and I actually calculated and 10 out of 22 garments that I own now for winter were handmade, so it's almost one half. This has more fall-like colors, which I'm not a huge fan of right now, but I enjoy wearing this particular item a lot. This yarn is a bit itchy, but I actually like it, because the prickly feeling keeps me warm during colder days. Unfortunately, I can wear it only with my pants. This vest is also crocheted by me, and I have a similar variant for warmer days, but this one is a wintry garment for sure. I think I will soon remake it a bit to turn it into a shorter variant in order to fit my body better. I wear it with pants and dresses. I haven't been a huge fan of vests before, but now I can see why it's a well-needed thing in my own wardrobe. It's a very easy layering piece for building warmth and comfort. The next item is what I'm actually wearing right now. It's red turtleneck that I bought as a gift for myself for my 40th birthday last year. It's very thin, it's very comfortable and very easy to wear layering piece. I wear it with pants and under my dresses, under shirts as well. The fabric here is very thin, it's a mix of modal and cashmere. 
I'm always so careful with putting it on because the fabric is so thin and I never machine wash it. I wash it only by hand and I just make sure to take a good care of my favorite garments so that they could stay with me longer. Originally this shirt was of a different color, but recently I dyed it using black fabric dye and this is the result and I like it so much more. The shirt is from an independent seamstress. It has cropped sleeves and boxy feet, cute coconut shell buttons and it mixes well with most of my clothes. This blouse used to be of a completely different color as well. It was kind of a cream light beige that was not a great match for my complexion, but I dyed it again using the same black dye. And I think this is one of the best results that I have ever achieved with uh, dyeing clothes. I usually wear it in warmer months on its own, but for winters it goes well with the sweater and the cardigan. This flannel shirt is one of the most worn items in my wardrobe. It's pretty thin, but very comfortable and compact, which is so essential for traveling. The skipper collar design is pretty flattering and easily mixable. I like the black and white big plate pattern, which is not super common. I wear it with pants and my dresses, and the oversized sweater also accommodates the shirt well. I ordered this dress from an independent seamstress almost three years ago, and I'm still loving it. It's a very simple smoke dress type with ties on the back and cropped sleeves. The heavy linen fabric is perfect for colder seasons. I wear it with a sweater, cardigan, vest, jacket, even the shirt. To make it look more interesting, I sometimes use detachable collars. This dress is a younger sister of the previous one. It has been the recent addition to my wardrobe. It's from a sustainable, independent European brand. And since we are currently in Europe, I was able to make my dream come true and order this dress without any extra taxes or ridiculous <laughs> postage situation. It's very roomy, has reglan construction and balloonish sleeves. I love simple dresses and I feel very comfortable in them, especially when traveling. I've talked so much about these pants in my previous videos because it's it's my only pants at the moment, so in a nutshell, it's almost the perfect model and cut and material for me. High rise, baggy feet, deep pockets, I love them. Wearable with all the tops and even together with dresses for some extra warmth and interesting layering. I didn't buy any tights for this winter, but I usually do. Although this winter I'm going very, very minimalist, more minimalist than ever. That's why I'm using leggings instead of tights. I wear them under my pants and with dresses or with this sweater. They look great just as they are, I think. These leggings are from a very basic fast fashion brand and I really liked the color. I liked the um, thick fabric on the thicker side and also high waisted uh, construction. So that's why I'm enjoying wearing them both outside and at home. These leggings are older and from a much pricier brand based in the US. 
It was a gift from Brian. They're very comfortable and I wear them just as the blue ones. This beret was crocheted by me using a free video tutorial on YouTube. It's very soft, easy to care and fun to style. As you might have noticed by now, I have quite a lot of red colored items and sometimes it's just difficult to mix and match them well without any color conflict, such as for example, in this situation with this beret and this cardigan that has a slightly warmer shade of red and to combine them well, I usually use something in between kind of to break the redness, such as this scarf. So yeah, basically it turns out to, yeah, like this. This is a cool way to balance two different shades of red. And as I'm already talking about it, this scarf is also handmade by me, technically handmade. I didn't even sew anything, it has raw edges and I hand dyed it. It's thin muslin cotton fabric and it's with me for quite a few years. I've also made the same scarf for Brian. I finished this hat just a couple of days ago using the remaining yarn from the sweater. I love hats and since I don't have that many clothes, having more accessories make the outfit experiences more interesting. It's soft wool, thin and warm and it has really fun ears. This beanie was crocheted by me about two years ago. I used organic cotton yarn, but honestly I was considering unraveling it because I thought that the color was too pale for my skin. But it actually works well with more vibrant sweater and the cardigan. It's not the warmest hat in the world, but together with the hood on my winter jacket, it just works fine for mild winters. This is of the same color and the same yarn as the beret that I've already showed you. On some days, I wear it together with a cotton scarf for warmth. The shade of red looks great with the dresses and the corduroy jacket. This is yet another recent addition to my winter wardrobe. I used some leftover and second-hand yarn for making this. This is a very minimalist, frugal and eco-friendly item. It's not bulky and just enough for keeping my neck warm. White mittens. I use the same leftover yarn as for the scarf and to hide a tiny knitting mistake, I embroidered little hearts. These mitts are pretty thin and small, but again, for mild European winters, they are just perfect. And these are the oldest items here, one of Brian's gifts for me from the times before we got married. He sent me these in the package all the way from the US to Siberia and since then they are keeping me warm. And for outerwear I have one super light jacket and one pair of sneakers that are technically not meant for winter, but I'm wearing them now and won't get anything else at least until January.
that's it. That was my entire winter wardrobe for my current lifestyle and aesthetics. And of course, I change some things around and I've learned a lot recently, such as I have finally made up my mind to always opt for wool instead of cotton for warmth. I used to have a very lovely sweatshirt that I enjoyed wearing, but it turned out to be functionally useless in, a, in this type of climate where it's more humid than I'm used to. It was too heavy, too cottony, and I was feeling cold wearing it all the time. Building a wardrobe is a very personal thing and it doesn't make sense to me to strictly follow any sort of advice out there because so many factors should be taken into account, such as lifestyle, body type, washing options, favorite fabrics, availability of things, and even some unique body temperature regulation peculiarities, because it turns out to be very important. Feel free to share in the comments what are some of your favorite winter wardrobe staples and why. Thank you so much for your time and attention, dear friends. It's always a gift for me to have them from you. And huge thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon and other tipping platforms, because thanks to you, this channel exists. And for now, as always, be safe and keep your heart open. And I will see you soon. Пока-пока!